From CBS News, this is 30 Minutes with Christopher Glenn and Betty Ann Bowser. As long as anyone can remember, people have been expressing themselves by writing or drawing on public walls. There's a word for this. It's called graffiti. However, there are times when graffiti can get out of hand. Right now, New York's subway system is in the grips of a graffiti epidemic. And in the middle of all this sprawl, a few of the young graffiti writers have perfected what some experts call some pretty good art. New York City these days is in the grips of a graffiti epidemic. The problem is acute on the city subway system, where sometimes you can't read the maps, or see out of the windows because they're covered with graffiti. Cleanup costs each year are in the millions. Still, there are those who think graffiti is art, if pop is in. Even the rock group Blondie has glorified graffiti in music. trains 
has a tremendous amount of artistic validity. There's probably not another major city in the United States that has so much graffiti as New York. Why do you think it happens here? There's a lot of expression that's really bottled up in the inner city. In the poor neighborhoods, the projects and tenements, there really isn't a lot of opportunity for self-expression. Frustrated musicians never have enough money to buy musical equipment. Frustrated artists never have enough money for studio space or canvases. All of us have in common a desire to paint and a desire to communicate. And I think that's what the essence of graffiti is. Right now, we've moved in the direction of commercial art, graphic, sign painting, mural painting. Do you think the kids enjoy the danger of doing it? Oh, for sure. Everybody that grows up in this society has a rebellious streak in them. A little it's daredevil. A little right? daredevil in them. We think the city is not aware of the fact that all graffiti is not vandalism and is deliberately ignoring our efforts to improve things. But at the point where society starts recognizing this tremendous drive and motivation among young kids to paint and to beautify their environment, to personalize their environment, that's the point at which things are going to start to move in a progressive way. Reese Stone is spokesman for the New York City Transit Authority. This year long, we will be spending in the neighborhood of $6 million for graffiti removal and vandalism. Do you have any idea how much it costs to clean up just one train? One train to clean the interior and exterior is approximately $2,500. And if you were to multiply $2,500 times the number of trains we have on our fleet, which is over 6,000, it comes to a large sum of money, and we do not have that kind of money to spend on graffiti removal. There are other problems far more serious that we should be spending money on. Do you think passengers have stopped riding the trains to some extent because of graffiti? Absolutely. There are many times when we cannot even bring a train out of the train yard to service in the morning because paint is applied over all of the windows, the motorman's cab, and that's the compartment where the motorman, uh, the train, uh, is, is driven and uh, they can't see out of the window. So that's a serious problem. Is graffiti art or vandalism? Vandalism. These days, it's war between the graffiti writers and the Transit Authority. A special graffiti squad has been set up, complete with undercover cops. The two legends on the squad are Kevin Hickey and Conrad Lishniewski. Two graffiti writers, Ski and Hickey, are the Starsky and Hutch of the subway. Is this where they get in? Yeah, here's one of the holes in the fence right here. We can go patch this up, they will cut it right open. To, to have enough place to cover the whole area. Are those two new trains over there? Got How long will they stay clean? They can last in place from a day to uh, a week, possibly. And that's before they're repeated again. When the kids see a train that's just been newly cleaned, they will follow that train. So these uh, young kids know the train schedule is just as good as the transit authority. You know, where they lay up at night time and where it's going to be, what yard it's from, how long it's, uh, the run is before they take out our service. You say, why don't you, uh, you know, write it, do it on a canvas or something? You say, who will, who will see my name on a canvas? My friends, uh, 5, 10, 15 people. This way I put my name on the side of the train and 5 million people a day see my name. Is that why they do it? Oh, it's for, the, for their identity. For Hickey and Ski to make an arrest, they have to catch a kid actually in the act of writing graffiti. And that's tough. For every one they catch, about 100 get away. Also, the Transit Authority has started a program to make convicted graffiti writers and their parents pay for cleaning up the cars. But graffiti isn't just a police problem. The subways are dirty, the service is slow, the crime rate is high. Graffiti is an added insult to an already hassled passenger. I despise graffiti. I uh, think it's a lot of junk. It just depresses me to look at it. It's very, very, very bad. Filth. Absolute filth. Destruction. I personally dislike it intensely. It's good. It's very good. It's fantastic. Ed Bengett is a graphic artist, art director, and instructor at the School of Visual Arts in New York City. Do you think it's vandalism? Yep. I certainly do. I, I think it's vandalism because it's not their property. So I don't, I'm not happy with the way they're doing it as far as 
going into the yards and hiding and working at night and so forth. But I am happy that they did it. <laughs> I love it. I think it's ghetto art, and in some ways it is art terrorism. Stefan Eins is an artist and owner of Fashion Moda, an art gallery in New York. He sponsored a showing of graffiti artist's work done on canvas. It's not exactly the Metropolitan Museum of Art, but it is legit. Art, of course, is a label. Um, you can call it whatever you want. I happen to love it. And to you, it's art? Yes, sure. Among the thousands of graffiti artists who do their numbers on New York subways, Futura 2000 is one of the few with talent, perhaps even worthy of a legitimate art career. But his acceptance by the art world still does not put the public's blessing on what is really vandalism.